All right, welcome back. If I got this far watching this, <laughs> notice that the, uh, the music changed. Music goes. Now it's more like this song. Got my new batch of cocoa. It's nice and hot near winter. And then, uh, all right, let's play. All right. Where do we left off? Oh, right. Let's see, this is open now. This guard looks like he is in charge here. Hello, I'm Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. I'm here to see Captain Juan Antonio Perez. And what is this regarding, ma'am? Official peace and security business. Okay, first you need to contact the personnel office. They can direct you to Captain Perez. Thank you. And how do I find the personnel office? I will arrange for someone to take you there. Please follow me. <laughs> they walk. Officer Wallace from the Peace and Security Division. Please escort her to the personnel office. That HDI is quite normal for a corporal in the armed forces. 71? Huh. That looks like an organization map. The Articles of Our Constitution, Final Bill of Rights. Her name appears to be Ashling Monaghan. Corporal Ashling Monaghan? Yes, and who's asking? Hi, I'm Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. Hi, Officer Wallace. What can I do for you? I'm here in an official capacity. I need to find Captain Juan Antonio Perez, service number 3865959. And what type of official business are you conducting about Captain Perez? It is regarding a murder case, Corporal. A murder case? Who's been murdered? A union citizen by the name of Vasily Bogdanov was murdered, and I'm conducting the investigation. A union citizen? Murdered? When? Where? In Odessa, Russia, on April 6th. I must inform you that the case has been ordered confidential by a judge. Oh, I understand. And may I ask what Captain Perez has to do with this investigation? I'm not sure yet, but I was hoping that he would be able to provide some answers regarding my case. Unfortunately, Captain Perez cannot answer any of your questions. And why is that? Has he been reassigned? No. I regret to inform you that Captain Perez died on the night of April 1st. He died? Are we talking about the same man here? Captain Juan Antonio Perez with a service number of... 3865959. Yes, I'm afraid so. I heard nothing about Captain Perez's death in the news. The accident is still under investigation, and until a conclusion is made, it will remain classified. What a shame. He could have shed some light on my investigation. May I ask what Captain Perez had to do with your case? His name, actually his service number, was on a customer list of Mr. Bogdanov's, the victim in my case. His service number? That is strange. The GPSN's military personnel rarely share their service numbers with civilians. Is it prohibited to disclose one's service number? No. As a matter of fact, there is no rule against it. But why would a captain of the armed forces use his service number while off duty rather than his name? That's a good question. I have a sexual partner who's a Marine, and he never uses any military number, rank, or anything when he's with me. 
He never even talks about work. Well, all our active staff know about. The GPSN sensitivity to keeping the military out of civilian sight. We are supposed to be invisible to the public. I'm not gonna answer that, is she? How did the staff react to his death? We were all upset. Captain Perez was a liked man among the staff. The personnel here had a very high regard for him. How about his piloting skills? Was he an experienced pilot? Indeed he was. His flight record was impeccable. So, did this raise any suspicions of a possible malfunction? Or even sabotage? I am not involved in the accident investigation, but I can tell you one thing. There hasn't been a single sabotage in the GPSN's military history. Really? I didn't know that. Yes. We have an excellent track record. Did you know Captain Perez personally? No, I did not. How long had he been stationed here, in Adrianopolis? I'm afraid that information is classified. How about his personal interests? The places he used to hang out? Officer Wallace, I have no information about his personal life at all. Isn't there anyone who can tell me about this man? As a matter of fact, there is. Who is it? Please tell me. You may want to talk to the First Lieutenant Ulrika Thorson. And who may that be? His former co-worker? No. Officers Perez and Thorson were sexual partners. Oh. How can I get in touch with Officer Thorson? She is commissioned here at the base. You can find her office in Logistics Wing. Thank you for your assistance, Corporal Monahan. You've been very helpful. And good luck to you with your investigation, Officer Wallace. Maybe this kiosk will help. Huh. Well, this is new for me. Keyword. Duh. I don't think I have one of those. It's a fire exit chart. I can't waste my time on a fire chart. I need to find First Lieutenant Thorson. It's a fire extinguisher. Hmm, maybe First Lieutenant Thorson has something to do with the fire code here. Thorson is one of the fire marshals. I should be able to find her room now. One one four two nine. I'm seeing little spots. I don't need I mean. to use that anymore. Ah! I was going to show you this little. I'll see little, just little illusion dots. You know, you see like a bunch of but. Black background with white stripes in between them, and you see those little invisible, those little black dots in between them. But they're not, but they don't really exist. But it's in your brain that's doing that. I just saw them. <laughs> that was interesting.
May I help you? I'm Senior Peace Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Peace Center here in Adrianopolis. How can I help you, Officer Wallace? I need to speak with you regarding your late sexual partner, Captain Juan Antonio Perez. How long were you partners with Captain Perez? Our relationship started almost six months ago. Then it was ended, abruptly. I'm really sorry for your loss, Officer Thorson. Thank you. But life continues and, as they used to say, the show must go on. Well put, Officer Thorson. Your dedication is admirable. Thank you for your kind words. But I am just trying to fulfill my duty to the best of my ability. What can you tell me about your relationship with him? It was a relationship based on love and respect. But wait a minute. Why are you asking me all these questions? I'm working on a murder case, and Captain Perez's name came up during my investigation. A murder case? What murder case? A Union citizen named Vasily Bogdanov was murdered in Odessa, Russia. Murdered in Odessa? I didn't know one of our citizens was murdered there. The case is being kept confidential until further investigation is made. I see. And what does Antonio have to do with this murder? His name was on a list of Mr. Bogdanov's. What kind of list? I'm still working on that. When did this murder happen, anyway? On April 6th. Antonio was already dead by then. Yes, I know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a good question. So, tell me, Officer Thorson, was Captain Perez interested in art? In art? Are you sure this is related to your investigation? Yes, it is. Well, let me tell you. Antonio was not an art enthusiast. Are you sure, Officer Thorson? Of course. He couldn't identify a Picasso, even if it was right before his eyes. I see. So he didn't mention any art interests to you recently? No. Antonio and I only had limited time together, so we usually focused on other, more immediate needs. Physical needs? Exactly. Did Captain Perez ever mention going to the Thing Store? A what store? The Thing Store. Down at the pyramid. I am sorry, Officer Wallace, but we have a very busy schedule at this base. We rarely have time to browse the pyramid. Oh, that's so unfortunate. There are great stores at the pyramid. And the Thing Store happens to be one of my favorites. And uh, what do they sell in these Thing Stores? Oh, all kinds of original decorative ornaments. What did you say the name of the store was? The Thing Store. I remember Antonio talking about a thing store, but I never thought thing was actually the name of the store. It is, and I suggest you check it out sometime. I will try to remember to do that, Officer Wallace. Ah, this is not getting good, man. Oh, this is interesting. Huh, all right. I have an urgent call from my headquarters, First Lieutenant Thorson. Can we continue at another time? Certainly, Officer Wallace. Goodbye. Goodbye. Julio finally came up with some useful information. Right, Julio? Uh, yes, Chief. We're all ears. Julio? Oh, yes. This Bogdanov fellow. Please, a little respect. Addressing a deceased person. Sure. Um, Mr. Bogdanov arrived to the Union three years ago. Okay, we already know that. Tell us something new, Julio. Spit it out. Brought more than $1.3 million with him. Wow. 
An impressive amount. I wonder where he got it from. I have more gossipy stuff, too. Excuse me, what kind of stuff? Uh, just that he immigrated with his nuptial partner. In Russia, of course. And what was her name? Larissa Lukin, his primary sexual partner, was his former nuptial partner. Uh, no do... way. How do you phrase this out? I suppose Miss Lukin never mentioned this to you, Phoenix? Nope. No, she did not. Very well. What else, Julio? Um, yes. There's this stuff about his finances. What about his finances? He made a lot of money over the last two months. And then bang! What does bang mean, Julio? Oh, he's too young. He withdrew it all on April 6th. What did he do with it? He took a banker's check. Curious. Why would he want to do that? Anything else? Not really. I uploaded all the details to your PAs. Thank you, Julio. Your timing was somewhat late. But nevertheless, let me add that we have an autopsy report for Mr. Bogdan. He was murdered by a 9mm firearm. 9mm is a typical bullet size for a handgun in the rogue states. Ouch. That would hurt. Yes, you know. <laughs> Julio, you are dismissed. I had a look at Bogdanov's financial information, and I found it to be very interesting. I suggest you take a close look at it. Sure, Chief, provided that Julio uploaded it to my PA. I'm sure he did. He may not be as smart as you are, but he's definitely very ambitious. He sees this case as an important stepping stone for his future, and so should you. Yes, Chief, of course I do. You need to be more convincing than that. So far, your progress in this case has been average. I suggest you focus better, or else you may lose your status as my lead investigative officer. I... I understand, Chief. Good. I also noticed Melvin Phillips Spencer's name in Bogdan of his bank records. What do you make of that? Oh, the man that died using the illegal device. I don't know, but I can investigate. Do that, but don't spend too much time on it. That case is being handled by our headquarters, and I don't want you to step on anybody's toes. Sure, Chief. I'll be careful. I'll get Spencer's autopsy report sent to you. One more thing. After you carefully examine Bogdanov's finances, ask Pierre Deville's opinion. I bet he'll make some interesting remarks. Pierre Deville? All right. In the meantime, I believe you have certain questions to ask Ms. Lukin. PA, access GPSN census database and add Melvin Spencer's address to my navigation map. But I better pay a visit to Larissa first. She's been hiding stuff from me. Mm -hmm. Hi, Larissa. <laughs> she oh, went straight there. Hi, Gindir. Sit She's down. Pissed. Thank you. How are you today? Well, maybe a little better. How is the investigation going? Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. Well, did you find out who the murderer is? Not yet. But there are some issues that make me concerned. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> That's like the only option. Approach her harshly. Larissa, I am totally disappointed with you. Phoenix, why, dear? Because you have been lying to me about your past. Oh, now who we? You lied to me about your history with Mr. Bogdanov, and I want to know why. I was scared. Of what? You know, nuptial agreement. Not acceptable. We decided to keep it a secret. Come on. You don't expect me to believe that. I want the truth this time, not any petty excuses. I was scared. Really scared. Of what? The Gambinos. <laughs> some kind of mental disease. I'll, I'll just say that's too funny. Is that some kind of a mental disease? No, Phoenix. They are a criminal organization. There are no criminal organizations in the Union. Trust me on this. They are in Russia, not here. The Gambinos. Why are you scared of the Gambinos? 
because Vasily used to be one of them. You must be joking. Unfortunately not. Being linked to a mafia and all, I wonder how Mr. Bogdanov passed the security screening. Vasily was their accountant, and they trusted him with the money. He was never notorious, and they always tell us our past is not relevant in the Academy. No, it is not, but... Wow, being part of a crime family? Well, if he passed the security test, that means he had no tendencies toward violence. Well, Vasily was very kind, I keep telling you. He just had no choice during his childhood, and he was doing something he hated. Then he told me we should take all the risk and try to immigrate. I still think about what might have happened if one of us failed the academy. Larissa, lying to a GPSN employee is a serious offense. You should know better. I know, Phoenix. I told you I was not emotionally fit to behave politically correct. I suppose you did, but you must never do it again. Understood? Promise, my dear. I have other things to get done today, but I'll be back. So Bogdanov used to be a Gambino crime family member. So hard to believe. Yet Larissa sounded convincing enough for a change. I know it's late, but I need to report my findings uh, to Chief Morrison. She's been hiding! You better have a good reason for bringing me here this late. Oh, you're gonna love this. Larissa Lucan claims that Vasily Bogdanov used to be a member of the Gambino crime family of Russia. You don't say? Mr. Bogdanov must have been a graduate of the Randy Hamilton School of Security. I beg your pardon, Chief. Randy. Are you talking about Senior Officer Randy Hamilton, my predecessor? I didn't know he owned a school for security training. <laughs> of course he didn't. I was being sarcastic. Poor Phoenix. When I started my tenure here five years ago, Randy was the only security screening interviewer. Later we learned that many of the novices he had interviewed and approved were convicted of serious crimes committed once they were living in the Union. I immediately suspended and eventually fired him when I had gathered enough scientific evidence. Oh, I didn't know that. Was he that bad of an interviewer? Yes, and he was a terrible judge of character. I think he believed that everybody had a right to live in the Union. I even had to take over the interviews myself until I commissioned you and a few others. I see. Phoenix, I want you to pretend that you know nothing about the shortcomings of Randy Hamilton. Maybe our Ms. Lucan has more skeletons to offer us from her closet. Bet she does. Evidently, Larissa Lucan told me that Bogdanov had been a Gambino accountant and that he was never a part of any duty involving violence. She insists that Bogdanov hated being part of a crime family and so he took the risk of stealing money in order to immigrate here. A Gambino accountant on the run? <gasps> hmm, they certainly have a reason to fry his ass. Excuse me, Chief. I said the Gambinos have a very good reason to have had this man killed. Don't you agree? I certainly do, Chief. I only have a little time. Continue. Fabian describes Matahari's distant and elusive behavior as an extension of her stage act. He claims that she acts this way to remain an enigma for her clients. An enigma? Apparently, that's a word to describe mysterious behavior. Hmm, this could be interesting. Chief? I would like to have a financial audit warrant for Larissa Lukin. Larissa Lukin? For what reason? You know that she lied to me once, and I think she might be hiding something about her finances. Such as? You know, altruism is a very common crime among recent immigrants. They just cannot let go of their old habits. Larissa has lied to me about her past, 
maybe the real reason behind her lies, is to hide the fact that she is still receiving illegal personal donations from Bogdanov. Did you see any proof of that in Bogdanov's financial records? Um, I'm not sure, Chief. What do you mean you're not sure? Your request is denied. You'd better be sure about things before you ask me for any warrants. Understood? Yes, Chief. Oh, I got to like I have a dog. nothing further to mention at this time. <laughs> Dang, it's already nighttime. Hmm. What should I wear? Hmm. <laughs> I don't need to speak to Fabian anymore. Uh. Oh. Call off. Oh. You talk to him. Oh, God damn it. Come on. Oh. That door must lead to I can't the door. Go. Uh oh. Am I stuck? Oh god. I think I'm stuck. You gotta be fucking kidding. <laughs> well, that was fucking lame. I just want to talk to him. Phoenix, come on. There's Mr. Mikhailov, sitting at the same table. Hello, Mr. Mikhailov. I'm Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. Hello, Officer Wallace. What can I do for you? Do you come here often, sir? Well, I tried to visit here at least once, when I'm in town. How did you first come to this place? Oh, an old friend of mine, Vasily Bogdanov, suggested it to me. I see. I wanted to invite yes. him today, but I could not reach him. He must be out of town. I'm sorry, but I have some terrible news for you. What happened? Is he okay? I'm afraid not. Mr. Bogdanov is dead. How come? I don't understand. How can he die? Mr. Bogdanov was murdered on April 7th, in Odessa. Murdered? In Odessa? My God! I'm sorry for your loss, sir. I don't know what to say, officer. I don't trust this guy. I'm on to my coldly. I'm really sorry for your loss, Mr. Mikhailov. But I need to ask you some questions so that we can shed some light on Mr. Bogdanov's death. Of course, officer. Anything. Good. I will need your full cooperation. Remember that you are a guest of the World Union, and you are bound by the regulations here. Even the smallest lie is not tolerated in this system. I understand very well, officer. Good. Good. How long have you known Vasily Bogdanov? Oh, I've known him all my life. Really? 
How come? You see, we were born and raised in the same neighborhood, near the city of Minsk. Childhood buddies? Yes. Matahari. Of course I do. Everybody likes her. She is so charming. Poor Vasily liked her too, you know. Yes, I know. Did Mr. Bogdanov know her well? As well as anybody can know her, I suppose. Despite her charms, Matahari is a very reserved woman. What is the purpose of your visit to the World Union, Mr. Mikhailov? I am here for business. Do you visit the World Union often for business? Yes, I do. I am dealing with international trade. Do you plan to stay here for a while then? Yes, I do. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay in the Union, Mr. Mikhailov. Maybe I'll see you around. Goodbye. I don't like her manners at all. But there's something hypnotic in the way she dances. Yeah. 
dumbass. Who does he think he is? He's way behind me. Thanks for my superior intellect. Ugh, I am so very smart. You ever go to that, web, that uh, subreddit? Redmond Reddit.com. Subreddit called I'm so very smart when people want to show how smart they are and making an ass of themselves. That's pretty funny. Strong research instincts. I finally figured out the send digit number. It was outdated. <laughs> he thinks I slipped up on that little 3D. Being such a jork. That was Spencer's. Well, that's new. I don't remember how to that to the DPA. Huh. Interesting. Oh, financial records. Let's take a look at that. Oh, my word. Look at all that money Bogdanov made. A woman named Lena Vanderbilt paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars in a matter of weeks. Melvin Spencer's name is on the list too. Didn't he die while using an illegal device recently? Anyhow, and those other names, they all look familiar. The price is getting higher and higher for her. 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 80,000, 150,000, 200,000. 200, Man, that shit must be a dookie. Think store profit. 6,000. Yeah, he's, he's money laundering. Our consultancy. That's some good old. That's some good art for two hundred thousand dollars for our consultant. No, consulting art for two hundred thousand. <laughs> wow. So March second, always on April fifth. One million. Holy moly! Look at that. He was throwing away his money all over the place. Uh, so he got rich super quick. He's just like, hey man, I got some I got some disposable income. Start his club. Sophia Capello, three thousand, three thousand. Start his club. Chez Pierre. Dining services. Roger Arnett, 37,000. Wow. Douglas Anderson, yeah, legal team, sure. Pierre DeVoe, art services, 1,000. Oh, poor Pierre. Jen's private lessons. A banker's check for millions of dollars? I wonder whose dirty hands are on those funds now. Total income. Two million. Cashier's check. 
And they took all the money. Ah, uh, well, who took all that money, man? Very PA, access GPSN census database and add Lena Vanderbilt's address to my navigation map. This must be Ms. Vanderbilt's home. Oh, I hope I live in a house like this someday. Greetings. This is the home of Lena Vanderbilt. How may I help you? This is Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. I need to see Ms. Vanderbilt immediately. Ms. Vanderbilt is unavailable. Would you like to leave a message? This is regarding official peace business. If Ms. Vanderbilt is home, you need to inform her about my presence now. Negative. Miss Vanderbilt is not home. Would you like to leave a message? Where is she? Negative. That information is unavailable. House computer, access Global Peace and Security Network database. I am a peace officer, and my badge number is 316 Charlie Omega 77 Papa Echo Papa. PEP. -E Greetings, Senior Peace Officer Phoenix Wallace. Ms. Vanderbilt, location, Adrianopolis Rehabilitation Center, admittance, Tuesday, April 9th, 2047, discharge date, unknown. House computer, send me a priority one message as soon as Ms. Vanderbilt returns home. Senior Peace Officer Phoenix Wallace, message recorded. Thank you for your cooperation. Genetic makeup, very strong immune systems. Scandinavia, twenty fifteen. So that means she's five years old right now. If she were alive. Bad looker too. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I've been here yet. Man, what a look! How fucking huge this house is. Holy moly. That used to be his private pool, I suppose. A private pool? That used to be his private pool, I suppose. In his own home? Man, that must be very humid if, that the, if that's the case. That's a humid house. Wow. A beautiful classical painting. <laughs> I, I bet Dr. Cat. Spencer had an expensive taste in art. Cat falls everywhere. a laptop computer with no network connection. I am really surprised that Dr. Spencer was still using one of these. You risk losing all your data if it fails. Waves. <laughs> Password.
huge! Oh, a round bed. Sandra claims that you haven't had real sex until you've had it on a round bed. According to her thinking, I guess I've never had sex. A very worn, printed book. Dr. Spencer must have been reading it quite often. Sir Thomas More. Dr. Spencer must have been a fan of this man. Man for all seasons. Oh, well, he likes it more so damn much. Yes, we're in. had such terrible taste. <laughs> Crazy butts. Didn't, uh, what's his face like the same thing? I gotta look at my early videos about that. <laughs> Bugganaut's computer, then he had that too. Zimbala, I think it was Zimbala too. I remember it differently. Maybe let me in. Okay, well, never mind. No, I didn't mean it. No, I. I meant to. Ah! Got to do this over again. You gotta be fucking kidding. Yes, we're in. I should check out this history department. Events that led to the World Union. Discrepancies in World Union history? This stuff is highly controversial. Very few people dispute the recent history of Great Economic War. And most of them are not nearly as credible as Dr. Spencer. Then again, his credibility went down the drain when he used that illegal device, didn't it? The history of war in the media. Broke state media. Danish media. Eyewitness accounts. Calcutta. Oh, the, the sociopath of the Calcutta. Quebec, non existent. The accuracy of history. Media news versus eyewitness accounts. The accuracy of Rook State history. 
So he's looking for the truce, eh? Interesting. Our uh, modern day uh, uh, what's his face? Oh, I can't remember his fucking name. Off the top of my head. Alex Jones. A modern day Alex Jones he is. I'm kidding. PA. Add Adrianopolis University to my navigation map. Talk to my best buddy. Hey girl, how are you doing? Phoebe, what's going on? Business as usual. Can we get together tonight? Sure. Eight o'clock at the cafe? Okay. See ya. Piper. 98%. So fucking high. 114, so she's a little smarter. Yeah, something smart. Lippy bitch. <laughs> Let's see, what was it? Lithia? 96. Monica? 99%. Dang, she's a. Uh, she's high up and up. Did I already contact Alexander? Did I contact Sandra? I don't remember. I've already made plans with her for tonight. Okay. I don't need to call her now. Cool. Cool. Piper. Oh, hi. I didn't expect you so soon. Did you know Mr. Bogdanov was a recent immigrant? Oh, so that's why he talked funny and wore those ill-fitting clothes. I suppose. He immigrated from Russia three years ago. Didn't you know? No, I didn't. I never would have thought I would work for someone from a rogue state. There are many immigrants in this town, you know. Adrianopolis is a border city. I guess I never gave him a second thought. Oh well. Do you think Mr. Bogdanov had any business deals to take care of in Russia? How would I know? He never shared his business plans with us. Can you think of any reason why he might have gone there? Maybe his main squeeze was there. If you know what I mean. <laughs> you think he would go all the way to a rogue state for sexual interests? Well, we all know he wasn't getting enough of it here. That's for sure. What do you mean? How can you be so sure? Oh, come on. His actions clearly showed that he was a man in need. Of? You mean I have to spell it out for you? S-E-X. I'm curious. If you work full-time, how do you have a chance for quality love encounters? 
Who are you? My relationship consultant at the college? I don't have to answer any question like that. Look, I'm just trying to get to know you better. You'll have an easier time answering my questions if you feel relaxed with me. Well, in that case, I'll answer your question. Meeting desirable men is no problem, because the store is always full of them, and I make time for my love interests when I'm finished working. How about the guys at school? Honey, once you get the taste of the men around here, schoolboys just don't cut it. When was the last time Mr. Bogdanov went to Russia? Went to Russia? How the heck would I know? Come on. He might have mentioned a trip or something. Can't say that I recall any mention of Russia. However, now that I think about it, some of his Russian buddies might have stopped in here before. Why do you think they were Russian? Oh, you know. The way they talked funny, and again, those ill-fitting suits, and of course, those penetrating stares. I felt like they were undressing me with their eyes. So, what would Mr. Bogdanov do with his buddies? He would have such a visitor, say, once or twice a month. He always took the individual upstairs to his office and closed the door. But I didn't think anything of it, because he was so weird anyway. Did Mr. Bogdanov ever mention his relationships with others? With others? Are you talking about males or females? Either. We didn't talk about it much, other than shop talk. He wouldn't mention his friends? Sexual partners? No. I never heard him say anything about his friends. And I definitely wouldn't want to hear about his sexual partners. You mean, you don't like to gossip? You look like the type that wouldn't miss any gossip. Oh, yeah? What makes you say that, Ms. Wallace? Investigative intuition, dear. So let's hear it. <laughs> I have nothing to say about his relationships with other people, male or female. <sighs> it's always an urgent message. What? Oh, I gotta go now. Rana Shaw. Okay. Piper, I need to leave at once. There's an urgent matter. Suit yourself. You know where to find me. Bye for now. I will come back soon. Bye. Doc, interrupted again. Hmm. These foreign visitors at Bogdanov's. It's not very typical for a recent immigrant to receive visitors like that. I wonder what they were up to. Hi, Ingrid. Hello, Phoenix. How are you today? Very well, thank you. And you? Very good. What is a novice's perception of exercise? Well, to be honest, it's not a good one. They're generally very lazy about it. Some of them have serious weight problems. With the help of our dietitians, though, they're all getting into good shape. All novices understand that they have to be in good shape in order to pass their GCAT exams. I can hardly understand such self-disrespect. Unfortunately, the novices do not easily grasp that a person's survival depends upon healthy decision-making and the primary biological infrastructure to ensure proper decision-making is one's physical fitness. Moreover, humanity's survival depends upon healthy genes and therefore a healthy body. I need to get going. That must be Ms. Shaw. Hello, Ms. Shaw. 
My name is Phoenix Wallace. I'm a senior peace officer here at the center. I will be conducting your security screening interview. Did I say your name right? You did, Officer Wallace. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to give you a small brief about the procedure. Please. You are here today because you passed all necessary tests required for you to become a World Union citizen. Uh-huh. And I am here to evaluate your citizenship application from a security perspective. Yes. I will try to be as helpful as possible, Officer Wallace. Oh, thank you very much. Shall we start? Certainly. Can you tell me anything about your biological family? No, not really. I was found abandoned when I was three. Just like me. Excuse me? I was an abandoned child, too. Really? Where? Here, in Adrianopolis. Don't tell me it was during the Eastern bloodbath. It was. How come you know about the bloodbath? Um, at the academy, of course, during one of the regional history classes. Oh, all right. I kind of hesitated there. Tell me about conditions in India. What can I say? Pain, suffering, and hunger, crime, all over the place. And you've seen it all? I've lived it all. There were so many nights in my life that I didn't have food before going to sleep or any proper shelter. I just cannot picture that. Well, I survived it all. As an old great philosopher once said, anything that doesn't kill you will make you stronger. You were certainly right. What do you understand from a profitable commitment? I understand that it is the underlying economical principle of the World Union's success. Well, there's much more to World Union success than just the economic principle. Our constitution, the final bill, has ten articles. Oh, of course. But without the right financial system, everything would just fall apart. I suppose you have a point there. Can you elaborate on your understanding of economical commitment? Certainly. To make the economical system work, one needs to buy items as cheap as possible and never sell them below cost for any reason. Textbook definition. Very good. Do you believe it? Yes, I understand that. The world depends on the applications of these principles. Otherwise, the system would just stop. Yes, it would. Did you live economically in your previous life? Not really. I was on scholarship most of my life, and that's how I got to college. Oh, don't be unfair to yourself. There's nothing wrong with a deserved scholarship. I suppose not. What was the worst thing about the Immigration Academy? So the price I had to pay. Oh, you mean the tuition fee? Yes. I had to save for six years while running on empty, basically. How did you earn the money? I did bad things, including hacking. Hacking? Oh. As in computers? Yes, I had to do something, officer. I was so tired of drifting from place to place. There's no other way to accumulate all that money. How did you find hacking jobs? Through the internet. Most of my customers never met me. And you never used your real name, right? Never. I was known as the Ghost. Yes. Why did you really decide to immigrate to the World Union? For a peaceful, better life, of course. Any other motives? I am a really tired person, Officer Wallace. And all I need is some peace and comfort. Life in the Union can be very demanding. Do you possess enough motivation to survive here? Your exhaustion can be a problem. I am a survivor officer and a hard worker. I am also very skilled in the computer field. I am sure I will add to the Union society, not take. You're a loner. I'm worried that you may find it difficult to adjust to the social intercourse here in the Union. My advisor in the Academy had similar concerns, but I was able to convince her otherwise. Would you be willing to get psychiatric help if necessary? Why would I need such a thing? I learned about all rules of etiquette. Well, learning rules is one thing, applying them another. You may experience difficulties. Well, I would consider it if necessary.
Do you believe you need psychiatric help to fit in the Union? Well, I'm not sure. But I would certainly get help if I need it. I need an answer. Do you think you need it, or not? I think I do. Yes, that is what I think, too. Does this mean I failed the test? No, it does not. Not yet. And throwing that gun at 70 already. I believe you were a complete social outcast. No, I was not. I had to stay away to survive. Don't lie to me, Rana. The devices show it when you lie. I think you will have a very difficult time fitting in the Union society. I doubt that, Officer Wallace. You lived alone all your life. How can you socially fit in? You need to engage in social intercourse to stay clear of any neurosis. I am not neurotic. And you know that. Not yet. And I'm not sure how you are not neurotic after all you've been through. As I said, yoga can do wonders. You're lying. Why should I lie? To hide the truth, of course. What truth? Your true motive to come here. You claim you have degrees, but cannot verify any schooling. You did not bring any documents, but you create miracles with computers. All of my records were lost. I was a hacker. Even that we cannot verify. You claim your nickname on the net was The Ghost. I checked our criminal files about internet. Nobody ever heard of The Ghost. But everybody knows about The Mirage. The what? Oh. <laughs> I know a lot about computer-related crimes. I even made profiles for hackers such as you. You know what? The profile of this notorious hacker called Mirage fits you perfectly. No, no. Rana Shaw? or whatever your real name is. Are you the Mirage? No, I am not. I can see when you lie. There's no point in lying. Admit who you are. Yes, I am the Mirage. Okay, Mirage. What is your real purpose for immigrating? Is this part of a plot against our system? No, I repented my hacker's days. You are most certainly lying. I have enough about you, Mirage. You are most certainly Man, a threat like to the World zero. Union Society. I formally declare that you failed the security screening. You will be arrested and sent to one of our rehab centers as suggested in Article 10 of our Constitution. After your treatment there, you will be permanently deported from the World Union and never will be allowed back here again. You are a sick person and terrorist. <laughs> After your treatment, Phoenix. you will be turned over to the Indian Rush. government. I believe a jail sentence is waiting for you there. Although I find jailing a barbaric tactic, you are one of the few who really deserve it. Goodbye, Mirage. Kitty cat! What? My word! Mirage! Never thought I would come face to face with one of those cyber terrorists. Man, I did a lot today. A very typical HDI, for her line of work, that is. poster about the Eastern bloodbath. Not like I want to remember any of that. She looks like she's in charge here. All right, up we go. Hi. I need some information about the late Dr. Spencer. Can you help me? If you need help about rescheduling your classes, you're gonna have to wait until the new professor arrives. But I'm not a student. Who are you then? My name is Phoenix Wallace, and I'm here to inquire about the death of Dr. Melvin Philip Spencer. May I ask who sent you? I work for the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. And you are? 
my name is Yonka Gabor. I'm the departmental secretary here. So tell me, why have you come? I'm here to get some information about Dr. Spencer. In that case, what can I do for you? May I call you Yonka? Of course. Yonka. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Thank you. And like please, nice call me Phoenix. Sure, Phoenix. When did you first learn about Dr. Spencer's death, Yanka? Well, uh, we got the news from the GPSN. It was mid-afternoon. Why did you get the news so late? Didn't you notice he was missing? Of course we did. Uh, but I wasn't worried. Why not? Because Dr. Spencer often worked at home, and occasionally he would turn his PA off while focusing on research. He would turn it off? What a strange thing to do. I didn't even know they could be turned off. Well, he had one of these older model PAs that you can manually turn off. Why would he do such a thing? At times, he just wanted to shut out the world, and he did not want to be tracked down either. Hmm. Why didn't he want to be tracked down? He would tell me that he needed his privacy from the whole world. I don't understand. The tracking system is installed for people's security, not for invading their privacy. Nobody at the GPSN would track down a respected person like Dr. Spencer. Academicians can do bizarre things sometimes, Phoenix. I am used to it. And this was one of Dr. Spencer's antics. It sounds like you knew him for a long time. Sure. For more than ten years. Was Dr. Spencer a Thing Store fan? I don't think so. He was a very reserved man. He never wasted any time with shopping, at the Thing Store or anywhere else in the Pyramid. If he didn't enjoy shopping, then how do you suppose he got that non-certified device, which wasn't even available at the stores? I think it was from his secret lover. Which secret lover? The one he was having sex with right before he died. Wait a minute. How do you know he was having sex right before his death? Ivana told me, of course. I'm getting totally lost here. Can you tell me who Ivana is? Oh, Ivana was the preferred sexual partner of Dr. Spencer. And she found his body on that terrible day. And she told you that she found him naked in bed or something? Yeah, that's what she told me. Wait a minute. She did not specifically mention nakedness. But she said there were plenty of signs of fresh sex. So, who is this secret lover? No one knows. But I think this lover was the person who introduced Dr. Spencer to the device that everyone keeps talking about. So, do you think he died while having sex? I am positive. All signs lead to it. Well... I think you're in the wrong profession then, Yanka. You would make one hell of a detective. I would? Oh, thank you, Phoenix. <laughs> Do you know who Spencer's historical hero was? I think it was Sir Thomas More. Are you familiar with him? Well, the name rings a bell. But I can't recall who he was. I guess he was the right-hand man of the English king Henry VIII and later killed for his opinion or something. Oh, I remember him now. He was the Lord Chancellor and a very trusted aide of Henry VIII. And when the king wanted to divorce his nuptial partner, Moore refused to support him due to religious reasons. Right. A Dr. Spencer used to tell me that he really admired this man because he was a man of honor and principles. 
he didn't change his stance, even under threat of death. Yes, I also remember that he was eventually decapitated by Henry VIII. He died just because he stood by his ideals. I guess he shouldn't have been that defiant. After all, it was somebody else's agreement, not his. If there isn't anything further, I think I need to get back to my work. I need to make some preparations now, since Dr. Spencer isn't here. I will come back with more questions. Sure. Well, this conversation went nowhere fast. Pierre. It's getting late, and I'm beat. Time to head home. I'll deal with Pierre later. Time to see Sandra. What should I wear? Hmm. Indeed. Uh, too nice. Yeah, this is fine. I need to get going, or else I'm going to be late for my meeting with Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, dear. The leads in the Bogdanov case are taking me all over the city. I even went to Station Delta 10. Station Delta 10? That's a military area. What did they have to do with Bogdanov? You see, the handwritten scribble from Bogdanov that I found included a military service number, which belonged to a Captain Juan Antonio Perez. So what's the connection? Well, coincidentally, this Captain Perez was killed in a plane crash recently. What? What plane crash? It happened over Russian territory. Evidently, most of the facts about the accident were never revealed to the public. Who told you all this? I spoke to Corporal Monaghan and First Lieutenant Thorson, and the lieutenant used to be Captain Perez's sexual partner. You're not going to believe how much money Bogdanov made in the last month. A dime and a nickel? No. He made over a million dollars. You're joking, right? No, I'm not. And guess who was one of his customers? Who, me? Don't be a clown, Sandra. Melvin Spencer. His name was on Bogdanov's bank records, along with many others. Melvin Spencer, as in the dead history professor? No shit. That's right. Go figure. What's the connection? Well, I have no idea about their connection. But I bet our stinky Bogdanov must have gotten totally lucky that month or something. That's a lot of money. And people with an HDI of only 70 don't make that much. Piper tells me that Bogdanov had a lot of unusual visitors at his shop. Visitors? Hmm. Of the male or female persuasion? Males, with ill-fitting suits and penetrating stares. She felt exposed under their gaze. They sound like a group of horny tourists to me. As you know, not many tourists travel from the rogue states to the Union, and the ones that can afford it usually opt for cities like London, Paris, and New York, not Adrianopolis. If they were tourists, why would they come here anyhow? Okay, so they were not tourists. Maybe they were Bogdanov's friends from the academy. What did Piper have to say about them? Piper thinks they were Russians, because they had accents similar to Bogdanov's. So were these Russians shopping at the store, or were they paying a social visit? Apparently they were there for social reasons, because Bogdanov took them straight to his office and closed the door. Yuck. A room full of Russians? The stench would be unbearable. Oh Sandra, forget about the smell. Sandra. I didn't say they were coming in hordes. They were visiting on an individual basis. Who do you think they were? Well, darling, I had enough analytical thinking for one day. You are the detective. You figure it out.
Guess who I met today? A pop star. Yeah, right, here at Adrianopolis. So, who was it? A childhood friend of our dead guy. Another stinky immigrant? Is he also as repulsive? He's not an immigrant, just visiting here. He looks okay. Sort of slimy, though. Well, all those stinky rogue staters are slime balls. What do you expect? If I were you, I would stay away from them. As if I have a choice. It is work, Sandra. Well, I keep telling you, you're in the wrong line of business. Evidently, First Lieutenant Thorson and Captain Perez knew each other for three years. So what kind of person is this First Lieutenant Thorson? She's tall and strong and seems to be very dedicated. And dedicated to what? To her work, of course. Is she attractive? Aren't we curious today? Well, I wouldn't exactly describe her as being attractive, but she isn't ugly either. So she's just average? Average, yes. But if she invested more time and money on her appearance, she could be hot. According to Thorson, Captain Perez was not interested in any form of art. So what's his connection to Bogdanov? I don't know yet. He must have been a thing store customer. I just can't imagine those two chumming around together. Well, they gotta have some kind of bond. Otherwise, why would Perez have shared his service number with a civilian? Who knows? Maybe First Lieutenant Thorson can answer that question. Unfortunately, she has no idea about their connection either. Oh, Sandra, you won't believe what Lucan told me today. Let me guess, she's going to take over the ownership of the thing store? Be serious, Sandra, for a change. Oh, well, whatever. So what is it I'm dying to know? While in Russia, she was in a nuptial agreement with Mr. Bogdanov. You are shitting me. No, I'm not. Julio finally came up with some useful information regarding the case. Then, I confronted Larissa about it, and she almost wet her pants. Somehow, she thought she was going to keep that information a secret. I think you better keep an eye on her. She's awfully sneaky. I had a very interesting experience at the Stardust Club. Don't tell me you picked up a devotee. Oh, no. Actually, I find the men in there to be quite distant. So, what did you experience? I watched the famed Matahari dance. Really? Is she as dazzling as they say she is? I can easily say that I've never seen anything like it in my life. It was magical disturbing at the same time. How can something be both magical and disturbing? Was the music too loud? No, but it was really strange, yet peaceful. I don't know, Phoenix. I think you're totally confused about what you saw. Are you sure you weren't dreaming? Yes, I'm sure. I admit I've been having strange dreams lately, but this was for real. I think you're working too hard and seeing things that aren't there. I believe you need a vacation, dear. Hey, Sandra, I've got something that will get your attention. You do? So we're not gonna talk about those loser immigrants again? Actually, we are. And it is <laughs> earth-shattering news. Really? Okay, Phoenix, shatter my earth. I am ready. You know the Vasily Bogdanov character? The dead guy? Did I ever tell you what he did during his life in Russia? No, you didn't? What was he? A male slut? As a matter of fact, he was a Gambino. A Gambino? Wait a minute. Isn't that some kind of a sexually transmitted disease? <laughs> no, for Pete's sake. Gambino is a family name, and the Gambinos of Russia are the most notorious mafia uh, family. I got the case of the Gambinos again. I don't again. get it. This shabby guy was actually a member of a criminal organization? You betcha. And the plot thickens. I figured out what Bogdanov did for the Gambinos. Don't tell me he was a hitman, or whatever it is they call them over there. No, sorry to disappoint you, but he was their accountant. Just a bean counter? 
and I was actually beginning to feel a tiny bit of respect for the little weasel. Sandra, you don't understand. This man left his entire past behind to be a part of our union, and you don't respect that. But when you learn that he used to be a notorious criminal, you start feeling respect. Well, being a Mafia member means he knew how to look out for himself and got what he wanted in his rogue state environment. He knew how to get in a power group, and that deserves respect. Uh, she kind of has a point there, too. All right. I have some really juicy gossip for you, Sandra. It is not about that immigrant again, is it? No, no, no. About Dr. Spencer, the history professor. I'm all ears. His secretary told me that right before he died, he was having sex. Hmm. And I thought you were going to tell me something that I didn't know. You know about this. How come? It's the big gossip nowadays, baby. That he had a secret sexual partner who introduced him to the device, and he died while using the device and having sex with her. My oh my. You guys already figured it out, didn't you? Of course. It's obvious. <laughs> Sandra, I need to leave now. Talk to you tomorrow, then. Sure. See ya. Oh, I can't go to Stardust. Okay. Guess time to go back home. Boy, that was a real productive day. Time to hit the hay. Oh, that rhymes. That's cool. <laughs> I'm a dork. All right. I'm going to stop right there. I think I did enough for today. Save game. Game nine. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys later. Ta-ta.